world. Today you're going to join me as I go about my day, and while you follow me, we're going to talk about femininity, masculinity, androgyny, and how my period fits into all of that. What are you having for breakfast, love? I'm making like a southwestern egg bake. You like it? Mm -hmm. Is it something we should put in the rotation? I think so. Unlike Grace who had her egg bake, I will be having overnight oats for breakfast. It's a delicious layered combination of oats, chia seeds, fruit, banana chips, and soy milk. I'm having this because I'm on my period and when I'm on my period, I get crabby and crave sweet things. While I'm eating, I'll let you know that this is a sponsored video. It's being brought to you by Clue, C-L-U-E. Just because I'm not sharing doesn't mean you have to stick your asshole in my face. Clue is an app that is available on iOS and Android. It happens to be the number one rated app of its kind by doctors and researchers, so hashtag legit. And basically what it does is help you track and understand your menstrual cycle. I've actually wanted to talk about my period and experiences with birth control for a really long time, though. So I'm secretly super happy they asked. Also, this whole video isn't just like a giant sponsorship, I promise. I think it's gonna be interesting and you should stick through till the end because we're gonna talk about things like oral contraception, my experience with NuvaRing, Grace's experience with the Depo Provera shot, and much more. What I'm trying to say is it's gonna be cool, you should keep watching. Look at this hair, I need to take a shower. <sighs> Now I like Clue because I usually have one horrible day of PMS during my shark week. When Aunt Flo comes to visit, my waterfall of pain, the crimson wave, my monthly oil change. On that day, my horrible day, my entire lower back is on fire and my uterus feels like it's trying to claw its way out of my body, which is, you know, great for me. The more I use Clue though, and the more data, I enter in about my lady party, the better I become at being able to accurately predict when that day from menstrual hell is going to arrive. Which is nice, cause, like I don't mean to perpetuate the stereotype or anything, but I am a giant cliche, and when my bad day of PMS rolls around, I am a crabby, grumpy, in need of ice cream and dark chocolate human. Clue can also help you identify times when you are most and least likely to get pregnant, which, I mean, isn't very helpful for me, cause gay. But like, maybe that's helpful for you? And the Clue app itself is also really slick and easy to navigate, which I dig. Plus, it saves all your data and period intel, so it's never lost, which is cool. Okay, the sponsored part of the video is over now. So anything I divulge from here on is just me genuinely oversharing about my period. Blurg, I've decided my hair is being weird and fluffy, so it's a hat day. Speaking of oversharing, I am going to go in the other room and try and put a binder over my sore bloated chest. It's probably going to make me feel things and I'm probably going to talk about them. Let's go. It didn't work. I couldn't fit into my binder. I'll try again later, maybe. This is because I bloat on my period, like all over my body, my tummy, my arms, and especially my boobies. They get a little bigger and much more tender. That's so awkward to disclose online. But it can make putting on a binder kind of impossible some months, which is shitty. And it makes me extra self-conscious about my chest because, you know, I can't bind. Uh, and it reminds me, like, it, there, it's on the forefront of my brain that my chest is there and that my chest is large, and that makes me feel icky, which sucks. And the thing about periods is they don't discriminate based on gender. A lot of ladies get periods, some guys get periods, non-binary humans can experience the period. Trust me, I know this. I have looked down at my vagina and said, I'm genderqueer and would rather not have this happen every month, but it didn't care. <laughs> but I do like reminding people and talking about the fact that a period doesn't have to be a super gendered thing. And getting your period or not getting it doesn't make you any more 
or less of the gender you identify as. Unfortunately, though, periods can cause a lot of non-cis people to feel dysphoric. My period itself doesn't make me experience dysphoria, but the way, excuse me, it affects my chest uh, makes me feel really uncomfortable in my body and my gender. So it's like secondhand dysphoria, which probably isn't a thing, but hopefully you understand what I'm trying to say. Anyway, Grace is coming home from errands in a few minutes and that makes me happy. Uh, so since this is like a real daily vlog, I might as well include the part where I cry. Because <laughs> uh, I cry like every day, I'm a crier. But uh, I have a lot of anxiety right now because of things. Um, I'm just bad at coping with all the stuff that's on my plate. And then, um, I was just really starting to feel like a wave of panic coming on, and then I asked Grace if she would hand me one of my calming down pills, and she accidentally handed me one of my go-to-bed pills, and I took it. So instead of a lorazepam, I accidentally just took a Lunasta at noon. Ugh, I should have just taken it myself instead of asking Booba to grab it for me. That was my mistake. Grr, but my anxiety had to do with being productive. And so the fact that now I'm going to probably fall asleep at 1 p.m. Um, and not be productive is even, like, worsening my anxiety. Ooh, if you all think I'm happy, I cry like this almost once a day. So that's fun. Uh, I got the crying scene from my mom. My mom cries a lot. It's just like a gene we have in our family. <sighs> I realized I probably shouldn't drive to, um, I told them about accidentally taking one this. Oh. Uh, I realized I probably shouldn't drive, um, 35 minutes away. So Grace came to the rescue. And she's helping me out today. This is another thing that happens when I PMS. <laughs> I get so emotional. <laughs> It's not your fault. That uh, was an accident. Anybody could have made that mistake. It was more stressful just because I didn't want to miss my haircut. I know. Because I love my haircut. When I cry and wipe my nose, my septum piercing gets broken. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not doing very good about like dismantling stereotypes of women. Uh, <laughs> that'll be for the next period video. Okay. Okay, on our way to get my hair cut. Bye. Here we meet again. It hasn't been too long ago. My worst enemy. to become my closest friend Oh, this for Please don't come again Hey everybody! So I just got back from my haircut. I'm feeling much less anxious. I took a bath. I woo saw it a little. I love the way it turned out. I feel really confident. I went for these edgy lines. So earlier we talked a bit about how periods don't discriminate based on gender. Well, I think it's also worth noting that birth control or contraception doesn't discriminate based on orientation. For example, Grace and I are both queer ladies, and both of us have been on different forms of birth control. There was even a point where we were together and both of us were taking contraception at the same time. So we were a lesbian couple in which both members were taking birth control. So like anybody can need and be taking contraception for lots of different reasons. I think people forget that. Like Grace and I are both AFAB, so the idea of us both being together and on birth control is kind of funny because it's like, no, you can't get pregnant. But like, there are lesbian couples out there with trans members in that couple and they might need birth control for pregnancy reasons. All kinds of people get their periods and all kinds of people have to take birth control sometimes. And I want to talk a little bit about my experiences with birth control. I have been on the pill and nuvering and I took them both because 
I was dating a man. I was really scared to start the pill because I'd heard horror stories before of people gaining weight and losing control of their emotions and etc. But none of that ever happened to me. So I was fine with the pill, except I could not remember to take it at the same time every day. I'd set an alarm, I'd get one of those lockets that you put the pill in the locket and you wear it around your neck so you have the pill no matter where you are. I did it all, but the pill would fall out of the locket or my alarm wouldn't go off or something, and it was horribly, horribly, horribly anxiety inducing and awful. I bought like 300 pregnancy tests and I took one like every week and I was con like perpetually convinced I was pregnant and I just couldn't do it anymore so I seeked out a different birth control option, one that I didn't have to take every day because I was so bad at it and that's why I went on NuvaRing and for those of you who aren't familiar, NuvaRing is like a little rubber ring that you shove up your hoo-ha and it sits there for like a month. I never felt it. It didn't hurt. It wasn't weird. It wasn't gross. It was fine. All my anxiety went away because I just knew my Nuva Ring was in there. Nuva Ring was good for me, but it weirded out other people and that's where my negative experience comes in. People just didn't seem to understand it and they asked really bizarre questions and it made me uncomfortable. Like I would tell them I was on Nuva Ring and then they would say something like, oh I thought about Nuva Ring but it seems kind of gross and it's like, why why would you say that to me? <laughs> what? You, I just told you I'm on it. Don't tell me it's gross. And they're like, it just sits up there, right? And I was like, yeah, it's rubber. It's not like it gets soggy. And I get it. They just were uneducated about NuvaRing. So they maybe had these misconceptions. I understand that. But still, they made me feel gross for using NuvaRing, and that made me sad. People also asked a lot of questions about NuvaRing and sex, which I kind of get. Like, if you were asking me because you were considering NuvaRing, uh, that would be fine and I would tell you whether or not I could feel it during sex, but I don't know. It opened the door for, for some reason, a lot of people to just ask me about my vagina and my sex life. That was the only negative thing about NuvaRing. I wanna go play with my puppy now and spend time outside, so I'll probably wrangle Grace up and have her tell you about her contraception stories. <laughs> We just got our fence in, so he's been loving being able to run around unrestricted. So earlier today, I told the people a little mm -hmm. bit about my experience with the pill and with NuvaRing. Will you talk about some of the things you tried and why you tried them? Yeah, I had my period for over seven months straight. It was horrible. <laughs> yeah, I have a genetic condition that gives me a high risk of breast cancer. And because of that, they prefer not to use any birth control with estrogen in it because higher amounts of estrogen mean um, increased re risk for breast cancer. So they tried the depo shot first, and that worked for what, uh, two days? Yeah, the depo shot did not work. No, and they tried it uh, three times and it did not work ever. You weren't really a fan of the depo shot, were you? No, because it lowered um, certain drives that <laughs> I'm used to having. Drives that rhyme with flabido? Yeah, that one. And that, I don't know, was irritating to say the least, because it made me feel more self-conscious. And then you ended up on something that did work for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, they ended up, I tried a, pro, a progesterone, I can't pronounce that word. I tried that in a pill form and that didn't work either. And then they finally caved and put me on an estrogen pill for only two months. And it was a low dose estrogen pill. Yeah, low dose estrogen pill. That was and approved by what your, is it approved by on, Yeah, approved by my oncologist and that worked. And then I've been decently uh, regular ever since. So that's my experience experience with birth control. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> bedtime. Oh, ow. It's bedtime. <laughs> I fell on the bed and I fell for my love. Bed bedtime. Time. Let's all snuggle and be in a happy relationship. You are pretty beautiful. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Putting it out there. Thank you. Yeah. Look at how cute you are. What a handsome grace. I feel like, like a weird fish. <laughs> <laughs> you don't look like a weird fish. Good night, humans. <laughs> I've been peering in from the outside for a month. Waiting to come back to myself. Checked the engine light on my mental health. And I'm praying for a sunny day Cause I'm dying for a fucking break